Okay, good. Good evening. Uh, this is Paul Monzioni, Chairman of the Zoning Board. Um, I'm coming on because I want to tell everybody we still do not have all five of us uh, present this evening. We're waiting for Tim Morgan to arrive, and he has uh, uh, notified us that he is coming this evening. So as far as we know, he's coming. So we're going to continue to wait until Tim uh, arrives. If after five or 10 minutes or so he's not here, then we'll probably start uh, without him. So I just wanted all of you who are uh, waiting to know we are going forward. We're gonna wait a few more minutes. We're gonna mute the phone and we'll come back on when Tim gets here or when we decide to uh, proceed. Thank you.
Okay, good evening. Uh, this is Paul Monzioni again. We're going to call the uh, meeting for the uh, Town of Alton Zoning Board of Adjustment to order at 6.10 uh, p.m. June 4th. And uh, before we go any further, uh, first of all, let me just say um, that Tim Morgan still has not arrived. Uh, we do have uh, six cases on the agenda this evening, so in order to move this along, uh, it's better that we get started now. Uh, when Tim joins us, he can uh, pick up, uh, just come on board uh, at the time he gets here and we'll proceed. Uh, we do have uh, four members under the state statute, three members as a quorum, and uh, we're permitted to proceed with three. We have four, so we'll go ahead. Um, also, before we go formally into the usual process, we have an additional statement uh, to read uh, entitled Until Further Notice, which is as follows. To keep our members and staff safe and to comply with RSA 91A, the COVID-19 state of emergency and the governor's orders on restrictions at public gatherings, the town of Alton is moving from in-person meetings to remote audio participation meetings. To remotely attend the meeting, audio only, visit our website, www.alton.nh.gov, the telephone access and remote access instructions listed under news and announcements on the home page. You can access an audio video live stream there as well. Or telephone the planning department's office at 603-875-2162 between 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. for more information and for the dial-in code and meeting ID for each zoning board meeting. So now we'll go to the normal agenda, which is a call to order, which we have done at 6.10. I'll now do an introduction of the board members and also of John Dever, who's sitting at the far end of the table, Alton Code Enforcement Officer, Tom Lee. Uh, after John, Tom Lee is a member, Frank Rich, is the vice chair. I'm Paul Monzioni, chairman, and to my left is Paul LaRochelle, member and also member of the uh, Board of Selectmen and Selectmen Liaison uh, to the ZBA. Um, it looks like we changed the agenda. Are we going to do the election? We should probably do that. That's at the end of the agenda. Uh, they amended the agenda. Yeah. On the amended agenda, it's at the end, right? Well, the reason why I printed it's at the beginning. It is? Um, I think in light of the number of cases, I think I would uh, suggest maybe we'd have a motion to amend the agenda and add and take that item, which is the adjustment officers, and do it at the end of the cases so we can proceed with the cases and then if, if that's agreeable, does someone want to make a motion in that effect? I'll so move. Okay. So, do we have a second? I'll second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, by unanimous uh, vote, we'll uh, uh, take the election of the Zoning Board of Adjustment Officers and move it to the uh, end of the agenda. Uh, appointment of alternates. We do not have any alternates. Uh, in the ZBA, we're always looking for alternates. If anybody knows someone or himself or herself is interested in becoming an alternate, please contact the planning department uh, because we could use an alternate member, particularly on nights like this when we don't have all five present. The next item is a reading of the statement of the appeal process. The purpose of this hearing is to allow anyone concerned with an appeal to the Zoning Board of Adjustment to present evidence for or against the appeal. This evidence may be in the form of an opinion rather than an established fact. However, it should support the grounds which the board must consider when making a determination. 
purpose of the hearing is not to gauge the sentiment of the public or to hear personal reasons why individuals are for or against an appeal, but all facts and opinions based on reasonable assumptions will be considered. In the case of an appeal for a variance, the board must determine facts bearing upon the five criteria as set forth in the state's statutes. For a special exception, the board must ascertain whether each of the standards set forth in the zoning ordinance have been or will be met. Next item is approval of the agenda. Uh, based on the amended agenda, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So unanimously, the agenda is approved. All right, so let's go to the first case of this evening, which is a case continued from March 5, 2020, which is case number Z19-25, Richard J. Fiore, Jr., Richard J. Fiore, Sr., and Arlene M. Fiore, owners at 19 Depot Street, Map 27, Lot 42, an application for special exception. It's in the rural zone. Special exception is requested from Article 400, Section 401D5 of the Zoning Ordinance to permit the repairs of commercial trucks on the property when off-site work is not an option. So now what we would normally do is have the uh, applicant come forward or the applicant's agent. Now that we're doing Zoom, I guess you'll come forward. The one thing I guess we're supposed to caution everybody about is since we're doing this uh, uh, virtually through Zoom, it's very important that we only speak one at a time because technologically the voices will become muddled and people won't hear what others, others are saying. We also, of course, have our recorded record that we always have for these meetings. And so it's very important before you speak that you give us your name. So could we have the uh, first applicant? And we'll see them on the screen. I don't know if they've called in. Um, the first applicant present on case uh, Z19-25, is there someone called in or connected to Zoom for this case? Okay, so it appears that this is a case continued from March 5th. <clears throat> it appears that um, at this time, anyway, the applicant and or the applicant's agent has not uh, uh, contacted uh, the board. Uh, so maybe we should uh, entertain a motion to maybe place this at the end of the agenda and take another stab at it in case the applicant uh, ends up joining us this evening, unless someone knows something and we know that the applicant doesn't intend to be here. He did, he was uh, notified and has not responded that he would contact us. Uh, the board was essentially, this was held over, re, essentially waiting on a decision from the select. I know, yeah. And which will be now. Okay. So, but if you want to move it to the end and... Hold that microphone a little closer to you, John, just in case. Yeah. No, not even on. Oh, they're not even on. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I, what's do, what's doing our record? Oh, the uh, telephone. Yes. Thing? Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, if you want to move it to the end and see if he joins us, right? That's fine. He has been notified and and you know, right. You know, left messages and whatever. So. Okay. No, that's good. And I think um, uh, you just never know. So right. I think to be safe. So do we have a motion with regard to Z19-25? And 26. Uh, and 26, since it's the same uh, applicant. I make a motion that we move case uh, Z1925 and Z1926 to the end of the meeting to see if the applicant will join us at that time. Okay, do we have a second? Yep, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so unanimously that case will be moved to the end of tonight's agenda and see if the applicant joins us virtually or otherwise. Uh, let's go to the next case, which is case Z20-02, Thomas Barney, PE, Barney Engineering, agent for Geraldine Gata and Jonathan Payne, owners at 64 Barbara Drive, Map 71, Lot 21, 
It's an application for special exception. It's in the rural zone. A special exception is requested from Article 300, Section 320 HB of the Zoning Ordinance for construction of a screen porch and deck, which will expand the structure towards and into the building envelope. So, is uh, Tom Varney uh, with us virtually or otherwise? Uh, okay, good. So that's C-2002. And this was a continued case, so that means that the board has already reviewed the application and determined it to be, and it has accepted it as complete. I believe so, and then, but the applicant had asked for the continuance because we were short on the quorum. Yes, but before that could have happened, we had to have accepted it as complete. Yes. So now here we are with four of us, and we're ready to proceed on case C-2002. Yes, Paul. Once again. Mr. Um, Chairman, I am going to recuse myself on, from case C-2002, as I did before. Okay, so uh, Paul Rochelle is going to recuse himself. Uh, um, yes, go ahead, please. Oh, wait, 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 right there. They can hear you. Okay, Tom, we can, oh, there you are. Hi, Tom. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, we good. I'll deal with that. Kate Barney, my assistant. So uh, that's normal pro protocol to see who who else is here, but uh, but I'm here, ready to go, I guess. Okay. The only thing, uh, Tom, in case it didn't uh, come out clearly, and it's of course your choice, is that um, uh, Paul Rochelle is recusing himself. Tim Morgan has not joined us yet, so there'll only be three of us. I just want to make that clear on the record. Okay, the, the client, Jerry and uh, John, should be here on, on screen if, if, if maybe they could raise their hands or... Uh, or like open it up so that they could be part of the conversation. Yeah. But Tom, you're okay with proceeding, is that right? Uh, no, I, uh, there would be only three right now, so I'd have to wait to see if somebody, uh, Tim, Tim shows up, but I'd also like to know that the uh, two clients are here, Jerry and John Payne. I, I believe they should be online. Josh, is there a way for you to know that? Oh, wait, we get the list right here, yeah. Yeah, what... Is there a way to open it up so that Jerry and John could join us? Um, so I'm looking at their li I'm looking at your list right now. What is their phone number? All right, I'm going to look up their phone number and then maybe whoever is Josh, who's turning everybody on or off, could maybe turn them on. I have an area code of 415. Okay, yeah. They're, oh, there they are. So, Jerry, so it says Jerry Gata? Yeah. Okay, Jerry? All right, she was on there. Mm -hmm. I will, uh, Tom, let me ask you this. Do you need their consent to request that you be moved uh, to the end of the agenda if, if, to wait to see if Tim Morgan shows up or do you want to make that request now? I'm kind of thinking I could go ahead with three, but I'd have to have Jerry acknowledge that if it's okay with her, I guess. Hi, okay, so we know now that um, uh, Jerry is on uh, Zoom with us. Yeah. Are you guys, can you hear me? This is Jerry. Sorry, I was muted that. I, there was no way for me to unmute until now. No problem. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry. So, um, Jerry, this is Tom. The question is, there's only three members and we need three yes votes. Kind of risky to go ahead with only three, but I'm not... Uh, I'm almost thinking it's feasible tonight, but if it's a big decision that if yeah. we 
So we can uh, wait till the end of the meeting or come back another month, so. Um, I guess, can we wait until the end of the meeting? Is that possible? I just, yes. I'm a little worried this is, you know, uh, I'd prefer to have everyone or four people, um, but let's just wait and see if the fourth person joins and then um, that would be great. Yeah, Bye. okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll pass on that one then. No, we'll, we'll hang around till later. All right, so Tom, you're requesting that we move this case uh, to the end of the, the agenda. We've already moved uh, uh, Z1925 and 26 to the end. You'd be after those two, if indeed those two end up going forward. Uh, do In light of Tom's request, do we have a motion with regard to case Z20-02? I'll make that motion to uh, accept that, that um, this applicant <clears throat> get moved to the end of the meeting. Do we have a second? Yeah, a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so unanimous uh, vote to move that case to the end of the agenda. That puts you after Z1925 and 26, but we'll see what happens. Thank you. Mr. Yes. Tom. He's still there. Tom. Yes, I'm here. That's fine with me. I, I understand everything. Do you want me to call you, Tom, when we get when we're ready? Oh no, I'll be right here. I have nothing else to do. I, I kind of enjoy this anyway. Uh, you know, he, he finds this very, very uh, <laughs> thrilling to watch this. And I don't blame him actually. And I, I think he should watch this. So I feel I feel badly for you, Tom. <laughs> you, you enjoy. So we're going to go now to the new applications, and uh, with the next case is case number Z2006, David and Jennifer uh, Boynton, uh, the owners at 340 Rattlesnake Island. It's map 77 lot 9. Uh, it's an application for special exception in the Lakeshore Residential Zone. A uh, special exception is requested from Article 300, Section 320J of the Zoning Ordinance for a replacement of a non-conforming structure in the same footprint as the existing non-conforming structure with the expansion into the building envelope. So if the applicant, we, you know, I guess you virtually come forward, but we don't need to hear from the applicant just yet because we need to review the application and make a determination whether to accept it as complete. So I need just a second to do that. Good. So, Chairman, I make a motion um, to uh, accept uh, case Z20 6 as complete. Uh, do we have a second? Yes, a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So, the application will be unanimously accepted as complete, and the applicant may proceed. All right, we should be able to hear the applicant now. If the applicant, you can go forward and uh, please give us your name before you speak. So, I don't know, can you hear me? We can now. 
Okay, so this is Jenny. Um, my husband was going to speak. We're not, he's up at camp right now and I'm at home, but they, you guys, he just texted me saying that you cannot hear him. <laughs> is there something that needs to be done to unmute him? We have our uh, tech guy working on it as we speak. Okay, okay, good. He, he is uh, Obviously, there. Obviously, guys, you guys are presenting this on your own. You have no agent, so it's David and Jennifer doing right. it on your own because I noticed the application didn't have an agency letter in it because you're doing it yourselves. That's good. Good evening, Paul. This is Dave Boyd. Can Thank you hear me? You. Good evening. Yes, we can. Good evening. Thank you for uh, the op opportunity to speak to you, folks. Uh, Jenny, if your phone is unmuted, can you just mute it? Because I get background noise. Thank you. Um, so we, I am getting a little bit of feedback. I'm hearing myself as I speak, um, but I'll do my best to surmise what we're trying to do. Um, our current building on Rattlesnake Island um, is a non-conforming structure. Um, given the age and um, the current structure itself, it, it needs to be replaced. Um, our current plan is to uh, tear down the existing cottage and rebuild within the same foot footprint. Um, there is one part that of the uh, cottage that um, falls into that area. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm just, I keep getting feedback on my line. Let me see if I can do something. Are you are you on by telephone as well, David? Or are you just Zoom or what? I actually have both on. So I don't know yeah, if they can. That may, that, that may be an issue. Yeah, uh, uh, Josh, our IT uh, guy is saying you, you're going to want to hang up the phone probably. Are you there? Can you hear me? We can. All right, perfect. I think I think we're better now. Let me just sound good to on. us. Let's just do. Paul, can you hear me? Can I speak like this? You, we can hear you well. I'm sorry, I'm still getting the background noise on my end. Um, I think that might sound a little bit better. Uh, so the, the current building, we're looking to take it down um, and then build within the same footprint. Uh, like I said, there is one part of the building that you can see on your first page of the application. It's got a box around it that is that falls into the area that needs to make sure that we have the special exception approved for uh, it. Um, when we look at the building itself, there won't be any change of use to that particular part of the building. We will not be, um, uh, um, um, the, the big change on that would be going from a shed roof to a gable roof, uh, no double story or anything like that. Um, but uh, the way that the, the shed roof is currently constructed, uh, that would create a drainage problem to the um, uh, to the remainder of the building. So we we're looking to change the, the pitch of the roof. Um, and speaking with the abutters, um, they don't seem to have any um, issues with this. It would not, would not restrict anyone's view. Um, and at the end of the day, we feel that the modifications that we're going to make to the property uh, overall will. Um, obviously a make the, the property uh, more inhabitable um, and uh, given that it's age it, it does need to be replaced um, and B overall it would probably increase the overall tax uh, based out of Alton. Uh, obviously any construction that does take place would be uh, following all the guidelines we have gone through and worked with the state we already have a state approval in place uh, for um, uh, to take down the cottage and, and rebuild uh, within the footprint kind of uh, going to the back of the envelope there we have uh, recently put in a brand new three bedroom septic system uh, within the last two years as well. Um, so we've done a lot of the legwork kind of preparing for this day. And um, th th this is, um, uh, again, I, Paul, I apologize. We haven't done this before, so I don't know if I'm giving you too much information or, or not enough. So please let me know if you have any uh, specific questions that maybe I'm kind of walking around that you would like to kind of hear more about. Yeah, no, David, you're doing an excellent job. Your application is very good. It's full of uh, good information. 
Can you hear me? He can't hear me. That's good. Maybe on your end. That could be on his end. David? Yeah, unfortunately, he still not hear you. Um, can I can't hear you, get folks, so I don't know if you guys can help with that. Yeah, I can. Um, how about this? Maybe I can call him so he can listen on my end, and then he can hear you. That'd be good. Okay. This is our first virtual ZBA meeting, by the way, but I think we're all doing well so far under the circumstances. So Dave, oh, okay, hold on. All right, Dave, I guess you can go ahead. That's not gonna work. Yeah, the phone call is not gonna work. It's creating a comment. So the phone call's not going to work, Jenny. I don't know why David can't hear us. Is, would it make sense for him to uh, disconnect and come back on, Josh? Why don't you try by telephone? Um, Jenny, can you um, get word to him that maybe he could hang up and uh, call back, try by phone, call in? Yeah, I will do that. You'd rather have him by phone than Zoom, is that correct? I, yes, I'm, I'm okay. saying that that would work better. Yeah. Okay. I will let him know. Hold on. All right. <clears throat> Sorry about this. That's all right. Okay, we'll see if he calls. Oh, hold on. John, do you know? Uh, he how said, what, into Shoot, what number? <laughs> um, he, he was on for a second. I think the number he used was the right one. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at my, okay, he, so he's calling you now. Go ahead. Increase the chances of another obvious feedback scenario. I'm going to remove his active session. Okay. So we're just going to talk to him. On the phone. Okay. Yeah, that's good. We, we didn't have one video anyway. He said he's Go on. Ahead. Okay. So I guess he's can on the. Hear us, Dave? Oh, I'm sorry. You guys, you can hear me though? Yes, we now hear you, David. So um, I was just saying when you got disconnected that you, 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 the information you gave us was very helpful and good. Um, the okay. application is, is very uh, good as well. Um, is there anything else you need to add? Um, I think that the supporting document should give you the information and hopefully we gave you enough visuals as well to kind of clearly identify the area in which we were, we were looking to modify. And I think the pictures pretty clearly show uh, the shed roof um, and you know the potential drainage issues that it, it obviously could cause. So um, I'm, I'm fairly comfortable unless anyone has any specifics, John, Tom, Frank, Paul, uh, or Paul um, around the application, I'd be happy to answer anything else. Yeah, good. Um, we typically wouldn't ask questions at this time. I just want to know the 
and the materials that you provided that have the photographs of the uh, structure as it exists. Under the photograph, it looks like you have some sketches or renderings of um, uh, elevations, like exterior uh, depictions. Is that correct? Were those intended to uh, describe or portray what the finished structure is going to look like? Correct, Paul. Um, and yes, okay. you're exactly right that the squares um, on the first page dictate very similar how it would be from the top to bottom. So it's not like we're trying to um, add elevation uh, to the front there. Uh, we're trying to obviously build within kind and, um, you know. Yeah. Just looking at the replacements the there. The question I have is, do you know uh, presently how far into the 30 foot uh, short front setback does the current structure encroach, do you know? I believe it's 10 feet, sir. Okay, you, you say you're 10 feet into it. And with the new structure, is it going to uh, remain as a 10 foot encroachment into the shorefront setback? Yeah, it's a good question, Paul. Yes, it's gonna remain exactly how it is, but I will tell you that if you look to the right of that um, picture on the first page, you'll see that there is um, a, um, a shed type of area as well as a small little walkway. Um, that will yeah. all be removed, so it will be right. a more it'll be a more conforming structure uh, than it currently is. Right, or less non-conforming. The the Thank reason you. I ask is because one of the criteria under Section 320J is that to the extent that you would be able to uh, relocate the structure to uh, eliminate or reduce the non-conforming characteristic of it. Um, uh, to the extent feasible to reduce the non-conforming aspect of the structure. So the reason I ask about the encroachment into the 30-foot uh, shorefront setback is would there be some way, it's 10 feet encroaching now, uh, the new one's also going to be 10 feet encroaching, is there a way that if you could relocate the structure so that it would not be as encroaching into that shorefront setback? It's a or really good question. Some way. I, it's a really good question, Paul. And unfortunately, the way that the um, deck is currently constituted, we could not do that. Um, so there will be no change to the exterior deck of the property. Um, so if we were to, as you said, kind of um, lessen the encroachment, then that would leave a large gap uh, between the current um, deck and uh, the current cottage. So it would not be feasible, unfortunately. I see, because the deck is going to stay there, and you're, Correct. And you're re okay, so you're rebuilding the structure. See, if, if it was one of these things where you were tearing down the whole thing and putting up a new one, and if we could say, hey, could you move it 10 feet back from the lake, but um, yeah, so, all right, I get it. That's helpful. Thank you. Well, Mrs. You're Jerry, welcome, sir. They're, they're removing the side, the side deck, deck right. which is reducing the, the encroachment encroach exactly. by 120 yeah, square, square feet. feet. Right, right. right. Okay. So they are making taking steps to make it less, less non-conforming. Less right. non -conforming. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions for the applicant? Yes, I do. Uh, good evening, Jen and uh, David. I had a question about you go into a gable style roof. I see your shoreland impact permit. Um, I'm just curious about runoff and pervious or impervious conditions of that roof and the new style of it. If you could speak to that. Yeah, sure. This is Dave. Um, I'm not sure who is speaking there. I can't see the pictures anymore. That was, uh, that was Tom Lee. Oh, okay. Hi, Tom. Uh, thank you for the Hi. question. So. Uh, within our um, approval from the state of New Hampshire, we do have um, water management um, uh, addressed in there in regards to crushed stone. And we've got specific guidance around uh, crushed stone uh, that would catch any type of runoff that would, would come off the property. So um, that would be the case in this instance of, of kind of moving to that gable. Uh, there would be crushed stone to capture uh, any additional uh, runoff from the roof. Okay, thank, thank you. Any yes, other sir. questions? No, no other questions? Okay. Um, 
So unless you have something at this time to add, David or Jenny, then what we do is we uh, open it up to public input. Um, one of the things I'll say with regard to that is we do have a letter from a Darlene uh, uh, um in favor of the uh, application being granted. And so the first thing we'll ask is, is there anybody um, on the phone or by Zoom who wishes to speak in favor of this application being granted. And I'm waiting longer than usual because I know there's some technical problems sometime of getting uh, connected and getting the voices heard, but we have not heard anybody. Um, normally in the room, we see them stand up or come forward and raise their hand. Um, anybody who's uh, attending, um, who wishes to speak in opposition or against the application being granted. I see. Anybody wishing to speak can use the raise hand feature or star nine by telephone and that will connect you to us and we can, you'll be heard. So again, anybody wishing to speak in favor of the application being granted? Or is anybody who wish to speak to be heard uh, in opposition or against the application being granted? So no one has indicated or come forward um, to speak. So we will close it to public uh, input. And I think uh, normally uh, uh, David and Jenny, if we had heard people uh, from the public, we give the applicant an opportunity to respond to those comments, but we didn't get any comments. Um, but it doesn't matter. Do, is there anything you'd like to add beyond what you've already uh, told us? Uh, Paul, this is Dave. I, I think we've uh, told you what we know, and I apologize. I'm sure you have uh, lots of folks that come in there that um, maybe know a little bit more about the process. So I hope we've done a, a uh, giving you the type of information that you were you've been looking for on this, uh, but thank you for the opportunity. All right, you're welcome, and you have so good. So we'll close it out to any public input at this time, and the board will. Um, uh, do we need to talk about it, or should we go right to the worksheet? The only question I have, yeah, it's just a question. I noticed there's, there's no comment from the conservation committee. Everybody, every other committee, is there a reason they may have? They haven't been able to meet, <coughs> so we haven't had a lot of been able to get a lot of good comment. Okay, so I, not that I feel that there's an issue, and uh, David and Jenny, I don't feel that there's an issue anyways, uh, and I want to, uh, this is Frank Rich, I want to commend you. We've had engineers that have not done as good a job as you guys have done, okay, um, in presenting your case. Uh, but typically we would hear from the conservation committee along with it, and we just haven't, but I, I don't suspect that there's any issue whatsoever uh, based on uh, what we know about your property and Rattlesnake Island. But I wanna commend you for a job well done, okay? So. And the other thing about that, Frank, is, um, uh, you know, they could, even without having to come here or having formal meetings, they know about these applications and they can fill out these uh, uh, department head reviews, you yeah. know? So I think if this was a real issue, we probably would have gotten would have heard something. Heard yeah. Heard so, something. Yeah, I think we would have yeah. heard something. And I can't see how it would be an I, issue I, anyway. I, it was just yeah. an issue that I wanted to bring up because yeah. typically we hear from all the different yeah. uh, groups. I would just say that I think uh, they're doing everything to make this a less uh, uh, non-conforming structure. They're improving it tremendously. It's going to be a much nicer uh, setup completely when they're done. Um, and this is exactly what these, uh, what this um, zoning uh, ordinance is designed to do. Um, there's no increase in the number of bedrooms or non-conforming aspects. All the criteria here are being uh, Matt, as far as I can see. So we, we want to go right to the worksheet. I and, say we go to the worksheet. All right. And Tom, do you want to start us off and then we'll move this way toward Paul? Sure. Uh, a class has been submitted in accordance with the appropriate criteria in Article 500, Section 520B. That's a yes. 
You don't have the worksheet? I, uh, I'm working on it, Mr. Chairman. No, no, that's all right, because I think John laid some out on the tables here. Yeah, they, they I don't know. I just, I'm lucky I have it. For the open side, I get it right here. They're all stacked. They're all stacked. Want me to find it for you, Frank? Lord. It's, there's I'll another stack right there that no, 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 I got it. I got it now. I'm sorry. No. I apologize. <laughs> That's Paul. Yeah, Paul can't find his way out of it. <laughs> okay. You did the first one, uh, Tom. Yeah, but you I, need to vote yeah, on the first I one. I agree. I agree. Agree. All right. All right. Okay. The specific site is appropriate for the location for the use. Is. I think it's absolutely appropriate, and they're, they're doing a great job of in, increasing the values of, around and uh, and actually mitigating uh, the um, the uh, uh, the uh, non-conforming aspect of the structure. In-kind replacement is being handled, um, and uh, so I think it's the, the appropriateness is appropriate for the location for the use. I agree. Uh, the use is not changing. Um, it's just an improvement to the structure. I agree as well. For the same reasons, it's a three-bedroom existing home now that's going to be redone to a three-bedroom um, uh, structure, so nothing is changing. Yep, I agree. Uh, factual evidence is not found that the property value in the district will be reduced due to incompatible land uses. First of all, this is not an incompatible land use. It's compatible with all the uses. Uh, it's the same use that it's always been. And if anything, uh, there's a likelihood that by improving this structure, it would improve uh, property values in the district. I agree. I agree. I agree. There is no valid objection from about demonstrable facts. Um, we have nothing that anyone has says anything about it or no about it, uh, said anything for or against. So uh, we had one for. We had one for by way. Uh, I'm sorry, we did have one for. Yeah, we had a letter. I thank you. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay, there is no undue nuisance or serious hazard to pedestrian or vehicular traffic, including the location or design, the access way is not secure. I agree. I agree. Uh, nothing about this is going to have any impact whatsoever on pedestrian or vehicular traffic. I agree as well, for there, there aren't really any roads or any vehicles to travel. So uh, I agree. Um, adequate and appropriate facilities and utilities will be provided to ensure the proper operation and proposed use of the structure. The uh, facilities, the, uh, they have a new septic design system. Uh, they've got a DES permits and everything is in place. Uh, it's doing nothing but uh, providing better assurances of a proper operation and proper use of the structure. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, there is uh, adequate area for safe and sanitary sewage disposal and water supply. So uh, they've got appropriate uh, uh, approvals from DES and the state of New Hampshire. Uh, nothing is uh, changed, uh, being changed uh, by this uh, new structure that would have any uh, effect on sanitary, uh, safe and sanitary sewage disposal of water supply that will all remain. Uh, appropriate. Agree. 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 The proposed use or structure is consistent with the spirit of the ordinance and the intent of the master plan. And the structure is in compliance with the criteria outlined in the section of 520. It was an existing three bedroom home. It's going to be remain in a, uh, a three bedroom home with a new structure with an approved septic system design. Agree. I agree. I agree, and I would say from all of the information provided in the application, it demonstrates that the criteria of 320J uh, are all going to be met. 
So in light of the uh, uh, votes, uh, do we have a motion for Z2006? I vote for a motion for uh, Z2006. I'll second that motion. All right, just for clarity, uh, Tom, the motion is that the application be granted? Yes, the application and, and, be granted. All right, and Frank, you've seconded. I'm seconding. Any further discussion? All in favor? No. Aye. 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 So unanimously, <coughs> the application is granted. Mr. Yes. I'm going to ask that when you vote for um, for this, some type of thing we do, voice the Go ahead. name. Go ahead. And ask whoever, you know, roll call type. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, because we have phone people and they're not seeing it and so forth. So, Tom, uh, how do you vote? Aye or nay? Aye. Frank. Rich. Aye. Paul Manzioni, aye. Paul Marshall, aye. Very good. So that's unanimous. The application is granted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you much. very Thank you so much, Paul. Yeah. We appreciate uh, you and the time of Elton. Good, good luck. Wonderful evening. Good luck. Thank you. Thank right. you, folks. Next case, next case is case uh, number Z20-07. Uh, Paul Goodwin, uh, Watermark Marine Systems, LLC, agent for Michael Sullivan, owner. It's 140 Rattlesnake Island, map 75, lot 30. It's an application for special exception. It's in the Lakeshore Residential Zone. Uh, a special exception is requested from Article 300, Section 3. 60 of the Zoning Ordinance to construct a dug-in boathouse 30 feet by 30 feet, a non-habitable structure as the principal building on the lot. So let's um, go to uh, the application first and let's review it. And first of all, let's make sure, is the applicant present or the applicant's agent? Uh, Paul Goodwin here, I'm here, and I think uh, Michael's also uh, connected here, if I'm not mistaken. I am online, yes. All right, good evening. So we'll uh, let us review the application to see if uh, it can be accepted as complete. And if so, then we'll go back to you and have you uh, present. Everybody have a chance to review the application? If so, do we have a motion with regard to uh, its acceptance as complete? I make a motion that uh, we accept as complete Z20-7. Okay, and by the way, I'm, now that John's reminding me, that motion was made by Paul LaRochelle. Do we have a second? Uh, yes, Tom Lee and I'll second that motion. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So unanimously, the application is accepted as complete. Please proceed. Uh, Paul Goodwin speaking. So what we have here is uh, on the on the existing conditions plan, you can see there's uh, currently a dock with a couple of pilings, a big deck and a residence that uh, partially is within the 50 foot zone. We have a wetlands permit to uh, remove the dock, remove the pilings, remove the deck, remove the structure and only leave the little shed that's uh, well behind the 50 foot setback um, and a permit to construct a dug in two bay boathouse. Um, the Sullivan's uh, primary uh, summer residence is to the right or to the north if you're looking at the drawings. And so we've skewed the boathouse to that side and um, it's uh, well outside the 20 foot setback for the abutter, but also that's where the replanting occurs um, for some privacy. 
Um, the access is also on that side, so the Sullivans can simply walk out of their house down the existing uh, barge. There's kind of a landing there from when everything was built before, and uh, they can walk down that access way into the boathouse. Um, the uh, residence, the deck, uh, basically all evidence of that will be removed and restored um, in the dotted line area. Um, if you look at the proposed conditions plan, uh, you'll see where we've got the dewatering system um, located where the deck is, and that all gets restored upon completion. Um, it's a, uh, there's the permit, it is permitted by uh, New Hampshire DES under a wetlands permit, so there's no shoreland permit required. All the work is uh, authorized under the wetlands permit 2019-2845. Um, that was approved in uh, October um, 2019. Um, the removal of the primary residence is what brings us here today. So there will not be a residence on this property. Um, uh, obviously, the Sullivans have a nice house next door, and they don't—they don't need a uh, a um, residence there. Um, one of the unique things about this type of a permit is you'll notice that the 50-foot setback line moves. Um, something I philosophically disagree with based on the statute, but that's the way, what they hold us to. So there are no non-conforming situations created by the dug-in boathouse, which creates a new uh, water line according to DES. And you'll see that 50-foot setback on the proposed conditions plan. So we, there is no non-conformity here. The only issue at hand is the lack of a primary residence under the Alton Ordinance. So if there was to ever be a a uh, residence constructed or any other structures, they would have to be behind the new 50 foot setback, if that makes sense, hopefully to everyone. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, Frank. <clears throat> so, Paul, what you're saying is that uh, you're actually taking this in, in a, and having it become more conforming because the boathouse isn't under our under our jurisdiction and the the original house that you're going to take down is in the non, what, what is in the non-conforming area but it's going to be there is a new line so that as you said um <clears throat> any home that mr sullivan decided to build on the property would have to be in behind that 50 foot setback. Uh, that's correct. That's exactly correct. And that's also true under the Shoreline Protection Act and, you know, wetlands regulations. So it is the only nonconformity here, if that's the right word, I don't think it is to describe it. The only, the only issue at hand is the Alton zoning ordinance that says you, you need to have a primary residence. But in terms of setbacks and that sort of thing, this project meets everything. Um, the only thing about the Alton uh, zoning reg, Paul, is um, the section 360 talks about a private garage, workshop, or shed as what's being permitted as the kind of structure that can be a non-inhabitable structure as, as the principal building on a lot. So I'm not sure how uh, dug in boathouse uh, falls into this and how this provides um, authorization for that. And then because it also gets into under 2A that the architectural style, building size, building height, exterior building materials of a private garage or worship shall be vis visually compatible with other buildings in the neighborhood and so forth. So when it talks about attics and stuff. so. To me, in having worked on this section too, in drafting it, I I feel like it, it talks about a non-habitable structure as the principal building, but then it goes on to specifically seem to be limited to garage, workshop, or shed. So can you address that, please? <clears throat> well, obviously we didn't come here by choice today. We were told this is where we had to go. So I'm not, I'm not sure what John's thought process was there, but, um, I mean, in terms of an island, that is your garage. There's, there's no other way to get there. So um, I would think the, the fact that it meets the regulations from both Alton's and New Hampshire DES standpoint, this is the garage for this property. You're not going to drive a car out there, obviously. 
That's, um, a, that's, that's an excellent a very good answer. point. That's, 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 right. that's an excellent <laughs> answer. That is a garage. So this is the water garage, this if you will, because garage. this is an island. Oh, oh, wow. Well, the boat garage. I don't know why when you were doing this this change of the zoning, you didn't think of that, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'll <laughs> tell you, uh, on the Zoning Amendment Committee, when we were thinking of how to rewrite these things, didn't really get a lot of thought to islands, you know? And uh, as Paul pointed out on the last case, I mean, there's no roads to drive around on here, so it wouldn't be a garage. And I think there are too many falls, but Paul Goodwin, I think, is um, makes a good point that uh, this is their garage. This is a, this, and I and I think we're a statute, we're a, we're a zoning uh, law or a statute of regulation. Um, Specific. I mean, I think it's appropriate to interpret it as applying to such things. So, the, Mr. Chairman, the, yeah. section, the section is titled "Non-Habitable Structure." That's true. So that's that's a even larger uh, category too. But then we go on to kind of define it in the specific criteria without including uh, boathouse. But I'm comfortable that we've had this discussion on the record. I think that 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 it all makes sense to me anyway, which could be scary. That's no. very scary, but it makes sense it to you, Mr. Right. Chairman. All right, sorry, uh, uh, Paul uh, Goodwin, you, we might have interrupted you. Good, please proceed. If you no, have I, I, I think I'm all set, but let me add just one other quick thing: is that the regulations are a little different on an island. So the fact that you can do, uh, you can have a path to the water for barge access forever, and all those sorts of things. So even the DES regulations. Um, and you'll note the plan here that the utilize the existing barge landing area as access. And I, in parentheses, I noted that it's an island property accessible only by boat. So even DES recognizes that the island needs are different than mainland. So. And and you you you're also representing that this proposed uh, project, this construction, the structure that's going there. Um, is going to be in full compliance with all other uh, requirements, uh, setbacks, et cetera, and also with regard to any DES uh, requirements. Is that That's right? Correct. That's correct. We have a DES permit. Yes, we have the wetlands. I see Sorry. that attached, which expires in October uh, 2024. That's the permit, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Frank. Yeah. Uh, Paul, you didn't by chance, did you have any conversations with the conversation con conservation committee? They did not respond, but I'm, we're, I'm just asking the question. Again, I do not believe this has any uh, bearing on it, but I was just curious if you may have spoken to them. Well, John, one unique thing about this is because we already have a wetlands permit, they had a comment period built into the beginning of that process. So they have 40 days in which to comment. So I don't believe they did um, because um, we received no comments from DES either. We received our permit without a question. So um, if, there is a, if there is a comment from the Conservation Commission, statute requires that we address it. So they, they must not have had any comments even in the first go round of the review of this. What I was happy to hear was that the highway department in Alton had no comments whatsoever. <laughs> Good on an island, yes. Yeah, that helps. Any, any other questions? All right, that's good. That's good. So unless, uh, Paul Goodwin, you have anything to add, we will open this up to uh, public input. And is there anybody uh, present at this meeting who wishes to speak in favor of this application being granted. And again, the way to speak up would be the hand raised uh, I the what was it, star nine? Star nine by telephone will get you in to speak. Anybody uh, in attendance at the meeting uh, wish to speak in opposition or against the application being granted? Okay, so having had no one contact us or speak out, um, unless you have anything further to add, Paul, we would close it to public input at this time. Uh, I do not. I would just, uh, Mr. Sullivan is on board here if he'd ha like to add anything, but he certainly doesn't have to. So I have nothing to add. Thank you. All right. 
Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, all right, so shall we go right to the worksheet? I think we should, Mr. We, Chair. We should, let's do that. And Frank, would you please start us off? I would be happy to, since I now have that case worksheet. in front of me, worksheet in front of me. Uh, the, a plat has been submitted in accordance with the appropriate criteria in Article 500 and Section 520B. Yes, it does, and I'm so happy to see that we've made now headway in terms of now knowing what we do on islands with um, non-habitable uh, units like this. I agree on the plat thing, yes. I agree. It's only and I agree. Uh, the specific site is an appropriate location for the use. I mean, this is certainly an appropriate location for a dug-in uh, boathouse. This is an island. Uh, the thing that was most helpful to me, there are many things helpful in this application, but the thing that was most helpful were the photographs. And we could see where that uh, dug-in boathouse was going to go when that platform was uh, uh, sitting on the shore. And uh, with all the other improvements, this is certainly an appropriate location for that use. I agree. Great. I agree. Frank Rich. And Tom Lee, so that was unanimous. Uh, Paul, factual evidence is not found that the property value uh, is in the district will be reduced due to incompatible land uses. Um, this is strictly a structure uh, that is being uh, done because this is a water structure uh, for, and, and directly for garaging, if you will, boats and because there's no other way or access to the island. So this is completely uh, completely compatible for the use. Tom Lane, I agree. Frank Rich, I agree, and I'll add that it's only adding value. The uh, incompatible land uses that are in there. Uh, Paul Manzioni, I agree. Mr. Turn. Uh, there are no valid objections from abutters based on demonstrable fact. I agree. I agree, Frank Rich. Uh, Paul Anzioni, I agree. We've had nobody uh, object in writing or uh, orally. I agree as well, Paul Orishaw. There is no undue nuisance or serious hazards to pedestrian or vehicle traffic, including the location and design of access ways or off-street parking. In many respects, this doesn't apply, um, and um, there is no vehicle traffic. Uh, there's very little pedestrian traffic, and the location and design of access is, uh, is, is well suited. I agree, Paul Donzioni. I agree as well, Paul Arshaw. Uh, adequate and appropriate facilities and utilities will be provided to ensure the proper operation of the proposed use of structure. Um, this uh, structure is not going to have any <coughs> uh, change to that. It's not going to have any uh, uh, plumbing or uh, anything like that. Great. I agree totally. All right. I agree. There is adequate area for safe and sanitary sewage disposal and water supply. This does not apply in this case. This is strictly a um, structure for um, garaging folks. It's uninhabitable. It's uninhabitable. Right. Correct. It's totally, I agree. Frank Rich, I agree. Uh, Paul Monteoni, I agree that there is adequate area for safe and sanitary sewage disposal and water supply because there isn't going to be any. So that's why there's adequate area. I tell you, you're right on top of the <laughs> you really are. The proposed use uh, of structure is consistent with the spirit of this ordinance and intent of the master plan. I agree. Totally. I, Frank Rich, I agree. Uh, Paul Monteoni, I agree. I think uh, the um, uh, Section 362 that we've talked about is uh, right on point for this, and I think uh, 
our interpretation of that as applicable to a boathouse under these circumstances, I think is absolutely correct. I agree as well, Paul. All right, so with all of that, uh, do we have a motion with regard to KC 20 07? We make a motion that we uh, grant a special exception for Z20 7. All right, that's Paul LaRochelle's motion. Do we have a second? Uh, this is Paul Lee, and I give a second. All right, so we're going to first take an all in favor and then we'll do a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. And uh, let's go. Tom? Aye. Frank Rich? Aye. Paul Monzioni? Aye. Paul LaRochelle? Aye. All right, that's unanimous. So by unanimous vote, uh, KC 20-07 for special exception is granted. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys. I appreciate good luck, Mr. Yeah. Good luck, Paul. Good luck, Mr. Sullivan. Okay, wishing you guys the best. Paul, Paul Thank you. Here, Paul uh, Goodwin, I just want to say real quick that you did a good job with preparation and explanation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go on to the next case, which is case number uh, Z20-08, uh, Genevieve uh, Michaud is agent for Scott Michaud, owner, um, or Michaud, uh, Michaud, uh, 915 Suncook Valley Road, Map 2, Lot 15. This is an application for special exception in the rural zone. A special exception is requested from Article 400, Section 401D41 of the Zoning Ordinance, excuse me, to permit the operation of a baker slash cafe in the rural zone. So let's uh, let's first see if the applicant and or the agent is present. Is the applicant or agent present on KC 2008? Can you hear? Can you see us or hear us? We can hear you. Yes. Ah, there we are. All right, good. So you're present. We're, we're going to review the application to uh, see whether we can accept it as complete. Did I miss the agent letter? Is there an agent letter? Did anybody see that? Yeah, this is okay. It just said that uh, Genevieve is the agent for Scott, but Scott is present. Yeah, and Genevieve. So they're both owners, so they're both going to present. So we don't really need an agent letter. Okay. Right. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review the application? Do we have a motion with regard to uh, whether to accept the application Z2008 as complete? Anybody make a motion on that? I'll make a motion um, to uh, accept the uh, application as complete for Z20-8, Paul Arshaw. Do we have a second? Frank Rich, I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that's unanimous. All right, so the application is accepted as complete and the applicant may proceed. If you'll give us your name and you speak first. Hi, uh, Genevieve Michaud. Um, 
with my husband, Scott Nisho. So I own um, Baked Brood and Organically Mood. That will be um, the business that we are applying for the exception for to have a cafe at 915 Suncook Valley Road. Um, and I guess tonight we're just presenting that we'd like to apply for the exception. Um, this property was built in 1945 and has been um, used as a commercial property um, is from what I understand since it was built. So I guess we're just here to answer any questions that you might have. Um, this is Paul Monzioni. Um, is the, so the baked fruit and organically moved, is that a, a, a separate legal entity, do you know, like a corporation, LLC, or some other form of business entity? Yes, it's an LLC. It's an LLC. So uh, the owners of the property are who? Uh, my husband, Scott, owns it. Okay. And so the applicant is Scott as the owner of the property, but the entity that's going to do the bakery is the LLC. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Okay. But if the application is granted, it would go to you, Scott, not to the LLC. Yep, that's correct. And then you would be the one who would be engaged in this use through what the LLC is doing there, I guess. So you'd have to somehow grant authority or permission to the LLC. But the 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 uh, if the application is granted, it would go to you as the owner. It would run with the land. And so someone else coming on there if you sold it could operate the same that distinction because um, I don't know that the LLC would have standing to present this application, so it's the owner doing it. I just want to clarify that for the record. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. And then So on the department head uh, reviews, do we have a um, uh, a um, are you referencing the uh, rate, John, or I can just look at it. one. I apologize. No, no, that's fine. Police, fire, and water department. Right, and there was some concern, right, on one of them from the fire department, just to have a we need plans for plans review when available. As far as zoning, fire department has no problem. So this is um, 400, section 401D41. While you're looking yes. that up, can yeah. I, may I ask a question? Yes, Frank. Um, the, um, Scott and Genevieve, the new septic design, is, it says, is being done that will accommodate the residential and commercial components of the property. Has that been completed yet? Yeah, so I, I could speak to that. Um, there is uh, on file at DES now an approved septic design for a 15 seat restaurant. Uh, we are working with a septic designer to refresh that design. Okay. So you have an approval right now uh, for a 15 seat septic. Is, is that what I'm hearing? Well, it's an old, it, it was an old design that um, is on file at the town hall. So we're not using the same design, but we're working with a designer to create a new, a new design, but it will be similar to what is on file at the town hall. Okay. So <clears throat> if we approve this, there will be no more than 15, uh, no more than a 15 seat um, um, um uh, cafe is, oh, yeah. is that, that is correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Um and then okay, that that's what I so we're okay with that, right, John? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Um uh 
That's great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, may I ask? Yeah, Paul Arshaw. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Paul Arshaw. Um, what upgrades are you going to be doing uh, in terms of the fire department with uh, uh, smoke detectors, um, carbon monoxide detectors, or anything like that? Um, is that they're going to be looking for a plaque for that and see what's going to go on with that. Have you? Um, I don't see anything here that describes how you're doing that. Yeah, so there's nothing there that describes it because we haven't moved forward yet. Once we move forward with the build out, everything will have to be brought up to code. So pretty much all, you know, everything that's required will be um, installed. There's um, pretty much everything has to be redone. So I guess you could say all upgrades. <laughs> I might make... Uh, you are also working on um, with the uh, DOT, Department of Transportation, for the state on a, a permit for access, correct? Yes, we actually already received the permit. I believe John said um, that it, a copy of it was received by the town hall. So you should have that on file. If not, I, I can send a copy. It's already been um, approved. Thank you. Um, this is Paul Monteoni. I have uh, a couple of concerns. Um, the first one is on the septic. Um, so I understand there's a septic on file in the town hall, is what you've told us. Um, but um, you're also telling us that uh, you're going to need a new septic design to accommodate uh, the restaurant with the appropriate number of seats and so forth. Because we have a, uh, a letter, an email, I guess it is, from Carol Locke. And she, we haven't gotten into public input yet, but this is part of our application file materials. And it says, uh, does the plan to open the bakery slash cafe include the installation of a new septic system since they may have to provide public restrooms? The current system on the property is an old fashioned dry well system which has run into our property in the past. Um, so again, I mean, you, is, are you representing to this board that um, in order for you to open this business and have this cafe, bakery slash cafe, you're going to redo your septic system with a new design that will be designed to accommodate the number of seats and the type of, of uh, business that's being conducted in the building? Yeah, so let me clarify. So when we purchased the property, um, prior to us purchasing it at some point, um, the owners had gone forward to have a septic design created had filed it with the town hall it's on it was approved by the by by the town hall um and then never installed so there is a plan on file that was never installed so the the septic that's um currently on the property would not be enough to um accommodate a cafe so we would need to put a new septic in um if we were to, you know, to move forward, have the cafe there, we need a new septic. Um, I, you know, I, her concerns, I'm not really, though I guess there wasn't anything on file that there was ever any concerns about what is there, but it, it really doesn't matter because a new septic has to be put in anyways. Yeah, and I might just want to clarify. Yep, oh, sorry. No, Scott, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I just wanted to clarify too, I wonder if that may have been referencing an older septic system. Currently there's a two bedroom septic um, on property now. Um, when we had it inspected, when we purchased the property, um, it was inspected to be in fair condition. Um, it's a, a traditional uh, pipe and stone, you know, leach field. Of, I believe he thought it was either a 750 or a 1200 gallon uh, tank that was on it. Uh, they noted that it needed to be pumped and cleaned, but it was it's it's actually functioning the uh, the sand looked clean um, and, and so forth. So I'm wondering if this might have even that issue may have predated the installation of that septic. Uh, but in either case, it's it's all going to be replaced with new. So the question that I have, though, about um, the uh, septic system 
is the, the even the one that um, uh, Genevieve is referring to that's on file with the town hall seems from what I'm hearing to be a septic that is designed for two bedroom residential structure. No. 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 Yep. What do you mean? The design was originally for a 15 seat restaurant and the residential use of, of the structure. That's so it, 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 was, it was for everything that was there at the time. Okay, so the design for the septic that's currently on file but has yet to be built is a septic design that would accommodate the two bedroom residential structure and a 15 seat cafe, restaurant, whatever, right? Is that yes, okay? Yes. Why? Right. So and for you guys, um, you're planning to do a 15 seat restaurant slash bakery. So. Yeah, plus plus the um, apartment. Yeah, but yeah. so and that's going to remain two bedrooms. Is that right? Yes. Correct. Okay. So the septic system that's on file with the town hall is designed to accommodate a 15 seat restaurant and a two bedroom residential uh, structure. And that's what you guys plan to build as part of this project. Correct. Okay. Yes, Paul, Paul, Paul Marshall, but I'd like to direct this to the, the, um, the code official. Um, the file that we have for the septic system in town hall is just an older, design that is uh, expired correct that is expired that would be um, redone to see if that could still apply correct and That'd be done to today's standards correct how old is that design or 20 years plus 20 years yeah it was a state approved design mm -hmm. so it was all you know so it had to be given to the proper authorities to go through yeah, it they, and they So, Scott, Genevieve, you do understand that um, you'll have to go to DES, I guess, or the septic. The septic designer will submit the plan to DES. A new septic design plan will have to go in, even though it's on file here at, right. in Alton. Yes. That, yeah. that has expired, right? Yes. Okay. Because yeah. if, if we approve this, okay, it would be a condition that that would have to be, um, that you would have to get the septic design. It, that would be one of the conditions, okay? Yeah. Just want to make you aware of that. Yep. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay. Great. Um, so w where is this um, 401B41? Mr. Chairman, you wrote, it, you wrote it. That's table of uses. That's table of uses. So right. that's a variance. I mean, I don't understand where where does the applicant find authority to have a special exception application for this purpose in the zoning rate if it's a take oh so it says by exception by special exception okay so where the hell is that on your this is on the staff board. okay so and that's in here mm -hmm. the next page. Okay, so you can have a restaurant um, in this zone by special exception. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I just want to remind you, you wrote that. <laughs> you wrote that. Okay. Now it was probably, you know, a while back, but you I'm, did write that. I'm not. <laughs> uh, maybe. I'll say maybe. Um, so then it's just the regular special exception right. criteria that are applying. Right. Um, of course, uh, appropriate facilities for proper sanitary disposal, safe sanitary water disposal, water, water supply, and so forth. Is this town water or it's, it's a well out there? It's a well. It's a well. So that's the other thing you guys, I have a question for. So um, one of the things we're going to be asked to look at in the, in the worksheet and find uh, evidence of is that there's um, adequate uh, water supply 
So for purposes of the restaurant, the 15 seat restaurant, uh, this well or whatever you have adequate to accommodate that use? Yes, it's actually a newer well. Do you know yeah, that? so with the, a new well was installed in uh, 2006. Um, and we bought the property. Um, our understanding is that it used to be a gas station. And so research with DES um, on the removal of the, the tanks from the ground um, ensured that there was, you know, that it was, uh, you know, there was no uh, constituents of gasoline or anything like that found in the, in the ground. So that was clean. Uh, but as an additional measure, we tested the water not only for all of the standard um, things you would test water for, but we paid for the additional test, which included all the VOCs, constituents of gasoline, and things wow. like that. Um, and it all tested clean for those things. And we, we can provide you a copy of that report. So, no, that's fine. But And then as far as adequate supply uh, from whatever well you have, uh, you guys... Uh, are assured or feel assured that the well will accommodate the needs of the restaurant as well as the residents? We do. Yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please. This is more for the town uh, uh, code officer. Um, I notice the, uh, under your comments that the applicant will also have to obtain a minor site plan. Can you elaborate on that? They have to go to the planning board because this is a non-residential use, they, they still have to have due site plan approval with the planning board. But it would be pointless to go to the planning board first because if the special sure. exception was denied, then they would not be approved. Absolutely, I, so, I understand. Yeah. I, but it said minor site plan. Right. Well, we have major site plan and minor site plan. It depends on the level of activity and the, and the scope of the project itself. So Hannaford's is a major. Right, this is minor. The cafe is a minor. You know, we, we, we have criteria, a certain amount of area that's affected and, and those types of things. You do understand that we need more cafes in the area. Okay. That's a major concern for me. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions by anybody else? All right. Uh, anything that the applicant wants to add at this time before we go to public input? I don't think so. That's fine. All right. Thank you. So what we'll do is we'll open this up to public input. And is there anybody present at the meeting who wishes to speak in favor of the application being granted? All right. We have one. Oh, we do have one. Okay. We're connecting to that person. Who, who, please give us your name before you speak. And the uh, request is for anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the application being granted. Please proceed. Yeah, my name is Michael Raymond. Can we hear me? We can, Michael. Good evening. Good evening. I am actually right next door to the said site. I'm just wondering what Scott was told about the DOT access on Route 28, because I'm pretty aware that uh, in the near future, they're going to be redoing this intersection here at Prospect Mountain. As uh, you guys all are well aware that there are numerous accidents here every year. Um, okay, so uh, just, so I, I, I'm sorry, what's your name again, sir? Michael Raymond. Oh, Michael. Okay. So, um, you have a question and a concern more than speaking in favor. Your your question is, uh, what the, uh, what's going on with the DOT and approval for access to that lot where the cafe will be? Yeah, as far as the you know the access off Route 28 or said Prospect Mountain Road, I'm all in favor for coffee and donuts. Believe me. <laughs> So I am just, uh, I'm just wondering what uh, DOT said to you, Scott, because uh, I don't know if they like gave you a plan of what's going on here within the next year or two. Um, as you guys know, they're working down the road at North, North Road in Barnstead, as that's a trouble spot also. Yeah, thank, thank you for that, Michael. Um, we actually worked with DOT pretty extensively on the, um, on, the, on the driveway design. We actually modified it and changed it a couple of times. 
um, in, in cooperation with them to really to, to make it as safe as, as possible. Um, so in the design that we have, and I know you probably can't see it there, Michael, but we're happy to share it with you. Um, but the, uh, the, the 28 um, driveway is only gonna be used as an entrance. It's not gonna be used as an exit. The initial design we had actually was to the left of that as an entrance and an exit. Uh, but as you pointed out, um, the road actually rises um, from the Prospect Mountain intersection um, heading northerly. Um, and we just felt that it would be safer to not have an entrance and an exit there. And we, we went back to the state and, and had a discussion with them and, and um, they agreed. And so we just made that an entrance only. The exit is gonna be out onto Prospect Mountain so that um, they could take a right and, and come to the stop sign. Um, the visibility line of sight in both directions actually is is more favorable from that from that place and it'll be safer. Uh, with, with regard to the um, future plans, they haven't shared specifics um, with us and I haven't seen a plan for that intersection. Um, but our understanding is that they're just like you had pointed out at the North Barnstead intersection, they're they're kind of lowering and smoothing the curves out. So our expectation is that it could uh, actually make it safer and we might take a look at the uh, the entrance and exit design again at that time all right yeah that's that I mean that was my biggest worry is just as far as <clears throat> where you're going to have an ex exit and access point because they as you well know they fly around that corner yes they're not they're, they're not slow they're not slow and I've seen your van and I'm like boy I hope it doesn't have a bullseye on it because a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people a lot of people end up in that parking lot yeah. The reason why Dale had those uh, telephone poles and everything wrapped around there is because people are always coming into that parking lot. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm all looking oh, yeah. forward to getting coffee from you guys, though. So I'm all for it. We look Thanks, forward Michael. To seeing we appreciate you. it. <laughs> okay. Anybody else uh, present who wishes to speak in favor of the application being granted? One more, by telephone. by telephone. Please give us your name. Hello and good evening. Hi, my name, can hear. Hi, my name is William O'Neill. Uh, I own the property next door and I'm in favor of uh, the cafe. All right, thank you. Anybody else present who wishes to speak in favor of the application being granted? All right, is there anybody present who wishes to speak in opposition to the application being granted? All right, so we haven't heard anybody, nobody uh, indicated on that, Josh, so. All right, so um, would the applicant like to respond to the public comments? Well, we're just super excited to open and um, invite everyone in and start making new memories on this property. So um, honestly, we're just thrilled and we've been getting a lot of uh, positive feedback. So we're ready to uh, get started. Thank you. Let me just ask based on the first, uh, based on Michael Raymond's uh, comments, um, and I'm focused more on the um, aerial photograph now what's described here. So um, the entrance, so you have an arrow indicating, you know, which way to Barnstead. So we're coming, by the way, was this the, um, this was a pizza place at one time or a seafood place at one time. So it's down that hill. Right at the intersection of Prospect Mountain Road, Dudley Road. And Route 28. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of a different. You're, you're thinking of the pizza place. Yeah. That was down below. Yeah. Okay. Down there. This is right yeah. on the top of the. Right across the mountain. And, 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 and Dudley Road. Come across. It, 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 to 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 say the least. Yeah. It was a, a junkyard. Okay. The last few years. I okay. say. You know, there was a lot of stuff outside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You come around the corner. Oof. And yeah. you're right there. You're right there. So yeah. also, but over the years, it was a gas station. It's right. Been, yeah. Uh, For years, so it was right. a lot of other stuff. So, well before your time. <laughs> if you're so on, the, if you're on twenty eight, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. The sign for Camp Mytina, 
it's that property right there. So if you're looking at Camp Mytina sign, that's the property right there. Okay. Because you're coming north. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to have one driveway for the entrance. So I and don't. And then the driveway. I'm sorry. I just I'm not sure you have the up uh, the updated um, DOT approval one. I know. John probably has it, but I think that what we included in the application might have been a different um, version. So I, I just, so there, you should only see an entrance from, it, it should say enter, and that is um, from the, tw from 28 and then exit onto Prospect Mountain Road. Do you, is that what you have? Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes. I don't. No, that's okay. Well, this one here, Paul. So, so, so you'll have the one entrance, so cars would have to, anybody coming in would have to use that. And then to leave, they got to come down here and take a right and go to Prospect Mountain Road and then take a right back out to Suncook Valley Road. Is that right? Right. Um, except the only, the only thing is that um, we've, we have an entrance also on Prospect Mountain Road, so people don't have to go out onto 28. So. I see. So um, how, are you going to have things on the property that are going to direct or make sure that the traffic is not flowing back out of the entrance? on 28 so in other words something's going to uh require people just to come in there but not to go back out yes yep and, and it'll all be you know lined we'll have our lines and our signs and everything will be very as clear as you possibly can make it so that um there are no um issues with with that and there will, just uh, for the clarity, there will be a, a barrier running along 28 along the property line that DOT has pointed out to us. Um, they've given us a list of acceptable materials to use for that, um, but that'll prevent people from pulling into the parking lot where they're not supposed to be. So uh, your use of, uh, in terms of a driveway access on and off of 28, your curb cut or whatever it is, uh, all of that is going to be subject to and approved by D, I mean by DOT after they review what you're doing and they check it out for safety and to make sure there are appropriate sight lines and that it's not going to create an undue hazard or cause a traffic situation uh, by how you're coming in or out uh, of your driveway. Is that right? Yes, well, actually, they have. We've already gone through that process, and they have approved it. So it's just a matter okay. of execution on our on our end. Because one of the criteria that we have to decide tonight, and and going through them all to determine whether you can have this application granted, is we have to decide whether there is or there is no undue nuisance or serious hazard to pedestrians including the location and design of access ways and off-street parking. So we have to look carefully at what you've got going here in terms of interfering with traffic or creating a hazard by cars coming in and out, coming around the corner, and there's somebody stopped to go in your driveway. But DES, in my opinion, in my opinion uh, knows a lot more about that than I do, certainly, and if they're looking perspective from a safety flow perspective and they're agreeable with it and they're giving you a permit to do this then I would defer to them as being a lot more expert and 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 you know more knowledgeable than I am about whether this is safe or not so you're telling us you have that approval so thank you yes sure. Frank um, to the John I'm yes. sorry do you happen to have that new plan from the DOT? We have it in the file. I, I, it didn't get in here, but we do have it. But you do have it. Okay. Have you seen it? I have not had an opportunity to see it, but I know that it was received. It is on file. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can hold it Certainly. I can show you. Oh. Can you see that? 
Oh, yeah, we can see that. Yep. Hold okay. that back up. Put it back up. You might have to make noise so your screen will activate. Oh, okay. All right. Um, can you see it now? I think you can see the um, the approval number, I think it's called. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, permit number. Do you see it right? Can you see it there? Right. Okay. And the first paragraph looks like it says permission is granted. Could you oh, put that yep. back up? And of course. Yep. yep. I'll keep talking. Can you see that? I'm not sure right. how much you can see, so I'm trying to hold it as still. Oh, that's good. Well, okay. That's helpful. Thank you for that. Okay. All right. Great. So we're close to public input. Um, we've had a couple of members of the public uh, provide comments. The applicants responded. Uh, we're close to public input. And um, anything you guys want to add to what you've already told us? I don't think so, unless there's a question of something that we've we've missed. But I think we're good. Okay, very good. We don't. So we'll go. You do, Paul. You're all set. Okay, so we'll go right to the worksheet, and uh, I'll start us off if that's okay. A plat has been submitted in accordance with the appropriate criteria in Article 500, Section 520B. Agree. Paul Arshaw. Agree, Tom Lee. I agree, Frank Rich. The specific site is an appropriate location for the use. This is um, a commercial space that was used before as a gas station, as a restaurant at one point, um, partially residential. So uh, the, the appropriateness of the location uh, is appropriate in my opinion. I agree, Tom Lee. Uh, I agree. It is a challenging site, and we, I wish the Mishats uh, the best of luck uh, concerning, but it is still an appropriate location for the use. Uh, I'm Paul Monzioni. I'm going to agree that it is an appropriate location for the use since historically it's been used for similar or uh, even the same uh, uses. And uh, the zoning uh, ordinance, as was pointed out to me, uh, permits this use now by special exception. Which you wrote. <laughs> Factual evidence is not found that the property value in the district will be reduced due to incompatible land uses. Uh, I agree, and I add that uh, this will only add to the property value of that district, uh, considering what it was used in the, in the previous last three, four, five, six years. Um, I agree that factual evidence has not found that the property value in the district will be reduced due to incompatible land use because I think this is a compatible land use and that it has been used this way historically. I agree as well for the same reasons. I agree. Tom Paul Archer. Sorry. Who's next? Me? Frank. Me? Is it me? Yeah. Frank. Um, there is no valid object, uh, objection from abutters based on the demonstrated old facts. There was one objection, uh, and I think it's moot at this point concerning the uh, 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 septic system. And, um, and we have heard from the applicants that a new septic system will be, uh, be installed uh, before they open up. Uh, and certainly it will be one of the conditions that I asked for uh, when we finalize this. Yeah. Um, I'm going to agree, uh, Paul Monzioni, I'm going to agree in the sense that um, I thought the objection was valid, but I think that the, uh, the objection was addressed by the applicant and the fact that there's going to be a, a new septic system. So at that point, the objection is no longer valid because, and, and I think it can be made a condition of um, the granting of this application should the application be granted. I agree. Thank you for clarifying that. I agree, Tom Wynn. Uh, there is no 
undue nuisance or serious hazard to pedestrian or vehicular traffic, including the location and design of access ways and off-street parking. This was one of the uh, criteria that I have the most concern about and struggled with, but I'm going to make the finding that there's no undue nuisance or serious hazard to vehicular traffic based specifically on the fact that if DOT has examined this and has granted permission for that driveway cut or for that driveway to be used at that location on Route 28, I'm going to put my faith in the uh, DOT of New Hampshire who does this all the time and they must have studied this and looked at it carefully enough and they're smarter than I am about it. So relying on them and I'm also going to suggest that if this is granted, there'd be an, a, a condition on granting it that, uh, all, that all DOT requirements be complied with. So I'll agree uh, on that basis. Well said, and uh, I can't add to that. You are absolutely correct, and I agree with that 100%. Paul Larshow. I agree as well, totally. I agree as well. Uh, well said, Mr. Chairman, okay, and that we should make that as one of the conditions. Adequate and appropriate facilities and utilities will be provided to ensure the proper operation of the proposed use or structure. Uh, upgrades will be done. Uh, a new septic design is, uh, uh, being, was approved or being approved. It will be looked at to be installed, will have to be done. Um, there is a, a well that's fairly new on the site. Um, so it does look like it. And the um, electricity is already currently there so that these uh, uh, proposed use and structure is I agree totally. I agree and add to it that, you know, with the applicant, um, we'll be uh, spending considerable amount of money um, uh, to upgrade uh, the facilities uh, 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 to the betterment of the property and the proper operation and proposed use of, of the structure. Um, I agree, uh, provided that the septic uh, system that ultimately gets installed uh, has been approved for particular use. Okay. okay. There is uh, adequate area for safe and sanitary sewage disposal and water supply. We've talked about this numerous times. I think uh, we're using this as a condition going forward as far as the septic is concerned. <coughs> And um, I think uh, we're in good shape going forward with that as a condition of the site. I agree. I agree. I agree. Oh, sure. This you know, our structure is consistent with the spirit of the ordinance and the intent of the master plan. This, um, this historically, this this property uh, was a gas station, was a coffee shop. It was used for all the same functions. It's being uh, reunited and reestablished as such, and uh, um, I believe it is in the spirit of this ordinance and the intent of our complete master plan. Um, I agree that it's uh, consistent with the spirit of the ordinance and intent of the master plan. I think the ordinance uh, permitting this by special exception, and when doing that, uh, it's drafted to be consistent with the master plan. I agree for the same reasons. I agree, totally. All right, so in light of all those uh, uh, determinations, do we have a motion with regard to KC20-08? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to attempt to do this correctly, okay, because I know that this, <coughs> this could be, yeah. I want to make sure that we do, that I do it right. Yeah. But I propose that we, um, we accept the special exception with the conditions of that specify the DOT uh, permit uh, as uh, stated by the applicants where they have gotten their permission and that and the function of the DOT is um, um, uh, taken 
taken in, in its entirety and completed on the, the site and the septic system has been installed uh, and engineered and approved by DES uh, because it, it's, it's outdated. Uh, with those two exceptions, I, um, Good move. I'm going to move to accept this, grant this application. Okay. So Frank has made a motion that we uh, grant uh, the application a special exception on Z20-8 on condition that the, as he's described it, the septic system uh, be installed and approved uh, according to DES and that all of the DOT requirements uh, for the, for the uh, driveway. To second that emo that motion um, to be granted um, by Paul or show. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, all right. So let's see who's in favor rather than doing it all. Uh, Tom Lee? Aye. Frank Rich? Aye. Paul Manzioni? Aye. Paul LaRochelle? Aye. Okay. So all of us agree unanimously. Uh, the application for Z2008 for special exception is granted. Thank you very much and good luck. We wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck. Have a good evening. Take care. All right. Uh, we'll go back on the agenda to the uh, first of, uh, of the continued cases. Yes. Yeah. Let's, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to take a five minute break uh, right now and then we'll go back uh, to the agenda. Thank you. We'll go off the record.
All right. So we're back after a brief uh, recess, and we're going to resume uh, on the agenda. So uh, in accordance with the uh, amendments to the agenda at the beginning, we moved uh, cases Z19-25 and Z19-26 to the end of the agenda. Uh, and so now we'll take those up again. Uh, is the applicant present to come forward and move forward with these two cases, Z19, 25, and 26? Uh, 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 Richard Fee. Senior and junior. Anybody with us online or on Zoom, video, or through telephone on these two cases? Uh, Tom has raised his hand to speak. Tom, you want to talk on um, on Z19, uh, 25, and 26? Right, we're not hearing anybody on Z19, 25 to 26. So um, in light of the fact that it appears the applicant is not uh, with us at the meeting uh, virtually or otherwise, uh, do we want to make a motion regarding that case? I, we sh I think should maybe talk about it. Maybe we'll make a motion and go into discussion uh, if the motion is seconded. Do we? Um, Want to move to continue it? Um, we, we, we. I wonder how many continuances this has had. Yeah, I. I think the the board has moved to continue. So we're at three. Yeah. So I mean, at this point. Um, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, right. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I. I think uh, the applicant has had plenty of opportunity to um, present himself, and uh, this no show. Uh, is now the second time because if I remember correctly, uh, one other time there was a no show, at me, which was at the last meeting. I don't know if you were here, I'm not sure if you were. I think I was. You might have been here, no, but I, I just don't show. remember. You were here. Yeah, he did not. No, the applicant didn't show. He I did, know he did not show. So right. I think uh, we've given the applicant enough time and. You know, we did at request for him that the Board of Selectmen chime in on this. Right. Um, and he he was uh, congenial about allowing that to happen, but this is now twice, and I think now uh, we should move on. You know, if he needs to reapply or redo it, then he can come back to the board, you know? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. You, you, you've also reached out to him. And, and he has his phone. Right. The planning office is contacted by, by email and also by phone and left messages. So they have, he has been actively contacted. Was there a response? No. You, there, were no, there was no response. Um, my only thing is um, this applicant was present uh, for several, of uh, course, before the COVID. Uh, uh, pandemic orders. Uh, he was present on at least three occasions that I recall physically present to have his applications heard. And there were problems with the application, I think, through no fault of the applicants, one being that uh, the um, uh, Board of Selectmen had to be notified as a, an abutter with an interest in abutting property or something. And so that procedurally get clear, you know, he lost a lot of time and so forth. And we accommodated the applicant by not having the continuances work against them and the number of continuances that an applicant has permitted. Um, and then after that, there have been at least two, now maybe even three where we've had meetings where he hasn't shown either virtually tonight or uh, in person. So um, the other continuance,
Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties, um, so just bear with us a moment. We're going to reconnect the call in about five minutes. All right. Is the have audio also? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. So we're back. We lost some audio, but we were discussing what to do about Z19, 25, and 26 and the history of the applicant being present on several occasions and now not being present for at least two occasions. Normally, an applicant is granted uh, two continuances without uh, there being a problem. This would, I think, constitute a third, even considering the accommodations that were made at the beginning of this case. And so in light of that fact, uh, do we have a motion uh, with regard to what we should do with Z19 and 25 and 26? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that since the applicant has not shown up for the last two, is it three meetings? Two meetings. Two meetings that um, we uh, we could dismiss the we dismiss, we dismiss we dismiss the forward application. No, you, you're still able to go forward and make a determination, which is what would be the best. Otherwise, we'd turn around and start all over. Well, the applicant could um, Or if we went forward, we can make a decision whether to grant or deny. He can ask for a rehearing if he disagrees with it. Right. Um, the, the, the one bit of information that you were waiting on that, that you wanted to be able to go forward with the decision was the input of the selectment regarding the condition of the right of way leading right. to the property. Um, I can tell you that. Um, I remember having a lot of questions uh, to try to understand this operation better of the applicant. I mean, I I don't know. I'll leave it up to the board. Uh, I mean, John is just pointing out that our options are we can we can go forward with each of these cases um, based on what's been submitted in writing and and rule on them this evening. Go through the worksheets and so forth on each. Uh, or given that the um, fact that the applicant has not shown up for two meetings, we would also, I believe, have the right to dismiss the application, at which point the applicant would have the right to start over because all we're doing is just saying we never got to you, it's, it's gone. And if you want to go forward, you have to start over. I kind of feel like that's a better solution because it gives the applicant an opportunity because I, I don't mind saying that I don't think I could rule in favor of this application based on the questions I have for the applicant who's not here to answer them. And I think um, that would almost result in, well, I'm only one person, but you know, if it resulted in a denial of the applications, 
then we're into a whole other process. Uh, whereas if we dismiss it, then the applications, the ball is still in play, provided he wants to go through the uh, expense and and uh, process of refiling, and then shows up at the thing and gets another crack at it, so to speak. But that's just my view. I mean, my, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, my opinion is that in fairness to the applicant, if we dismiss it and we don't rule on it, the opportunity to come back to the board without us ruling on it, because I certainly, along with, I know you do too, and I'm sure uh, some of the other committee <coughs> members have a lot of questions uh, on this particular thing, but in fairness to the applicant, I think we would be better off as a committee to dismiss. You said the same thing as uh, Mr. Mazzoni, uh, the chairman said, so I agree 100% that, that I think I have a lot of questions. I don't, I would prefer not to uh, go to the worksheet and work this out tonight. I think in fairness, we should go um, one more time and dismiss this. So the applicant has the option to continue. Uh, so he have to, would have to reapply. He'd have to reapply. Right. Correct. Right. But I think that's the right thing to do. I agree. All right, so in light of that, do we have a motion then with regard to cases Z19, 25, and 26? Yes, I'd like to put forward a motion for cases Z19, 25, and Z19, 26 to be dismissed. All right, so Tom Lee making a motion to dismiss uh, those two cases, to dismiss the applications. Uh, do we have a second? A second. Uh, Paul LaRochelle, second. Any further discussion? Uh, let's take a vote, Tom. Frank? Frank, aye. Uh, Paul Manzioni, aye. Marshall, aye. All right, so unanimously, uh, these applications will be dismissed. If in order to proceed, the applicant will have to uh, reapply. All right, so that takes care of those two. That brings us now to the last uh, application, case Z20-02. And I will note for the record, if it's not obvious, uh, Tim Morgan, well, it wouldn't be obvious because he could have joined us uh, by way of Zoom or telephone, but um, I'm told by our IT guy that um, Tim has not joined us. He's not here physically, so he hasn't joined us. So let me go to Tom Barney and uh, uh, find out uh, how do you want to proceed, Tom? We'd like to continue to another meeting, and I've talked to Jerry, the uh, owner, and uh, she agrees with me. So uh, we'd like to have more than three members of the board to act on it. Well, that that makes sense, and I and as we say, we always uh, accommodate that when there's uh, uh, three of us, and we don't uh, hold the continuance against you as one of the uh, two continuances permitted without having your application dismissed. So, um, in light of that request, do we have a motion? Um, Tom, you'd be okay uh, with the reschedule to the next regularly scheduled meeting? Yes. All right, thank you. So, do we have a motion with regard to Z20-0? I will make a motion. Um, uh, Tom Espani, PE, uh, to the next scheduled meeting based on the fact that we, uh, that he has requested uh, that request since we only have three members uh, available to, to, uh, to hear the, hear his, hear the, hear, hear the uh, uh, special exception. Um, when is that meeting, John? That meeting would be July 2nd. Okay, that would be July uh, 2nd, uh, 6 p.m. We have a motion by Frank Rich to continue based on the fact that only three members would hear the application this evening. Do we have a second to that motion? Second that motion. Tom Lee seconds the motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Tom? Aye. Aye. Frank? Aye. Paul Manzioni? Aye. I can't. I can't vote. Oh, you, you're recused. Yes. Um, Okay, good. So uh, by unanimous uh, vote of uh, a quorum, three, the three, um, the, that uh, case number Z20-02 will be continued to July 2nd 
at 6 p.m. the next regularly scheduled meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Right. So, Tom, don't go anywhere because you like all this, so we want you to stay and watch the rest of the meeting, please. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, let's go right on the uh, agenda is other business. Number one is previous business. 1A is discussion of the results of town meeting decisions regarding the planning board's warrant article. So that's, a, what's that? I was talking about the zoning amendments that were approved or were not. Right. Well, yeah. Where, do, where, where did that ultimately fall? I had some idea at the time, but I know it's been so long. And by the way, with regard to those elections, which of course were in March, um, I just got sworn in like two days ago on the street there. I had to go stand on the street and get sworn in. Lisa came down and did she? Yeah, because you couldn't come in. No. So is that a legitimate swearing <laughs> <Yeah>. in? <laughs> did you have a Bible? No, but I made my swore. hand. Oh, you swore? Yeah, you swore. I swore. That's all right. Yeah, I know there was. Off the top of your head, the ones that, that we wanted that we didn't get, so the, for example, like the firewood thing didn't pass, I don't right. think. Right. That you know? Pass. Firewood and the uh, uh, product storage. Right. The storage. So, so. Right. So, I mean, at some point, you know, the Zach has to figure out whether to take a stab at him again, and if so, you know, how to do it. I mean, those were completely commonsensical, you know, things. Like, why would you want to have and dry, you know? And it was a pretty vehement public uh, comments. Misinformation. Yeah, it's, 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 absolute yeah. misinformation. Little consensus. Was, they didn't understand it. They, you know, they. What was thrown out was not what was going. What was we were requesting? Right, right. So, yeah, we'll have to look at those again. One's been twice now defeated. So, right. Uh, but the others would, you know, and and then making an absolute point of getting ahead of the curve on comment. Right, right. It's got to be described, uh, you know, a little differently. So, you know, very basic stuff, and we got to have. Probably in the Bayside, or you know, for those that do that, and then of course, and all the social website on the website. Yeah, on the website. So goes. I think Zach will have, you know, should spend the first couple of session meetings talking about those and how to reapproach them and how to get the word out, you know, um, more effectively maybe. But all right. So then the next item is new business, the planning department's new Facebook page. But that you know that we have one and that's being updated. It's not one where there's comments made back and forth. It's uh, information. I say, yeah. But they're they're putting the information on yeah. everything that's going on. Right. I think it was actually a good idea because there's a lot of people that don't go on the website or check the uh, what the board what's going on here in town hall. A lot of them are on social media. Right. A lot of them are, uh, get their information that one. It's better to have the department head and actually put. Yeah, the correct information yeah. on there, so they're not just being misled. Right. So, so that they can't make comment. So that may tie into the to the prior thing we were just discussing. Yeah. So one of the things we do is put some information out on the Facebook with regard to these whatever the warrant article mm -hmm. things are going to be next year. So I think it would be very helpful. Yeah. All right. Uh, approval of minutes of March. Um, I have to tell you that I didn't review them. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I may have, but I don't have them with you, me. Oh, wait a second. Wait a wait second. A I didn't review them, but I may have. I may have. Wait, what does that mean? What does that mean? Is that a lawyer? Is that a lawyer? Is that a lawyer? That that's why we didn't. I, we had I never off. looked that's at them, but I may have. I may have. I may have. It depends on it what It could have been. Minutes. It might have been. Yeah, do you guys have the minutes? Yes. I have. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm okay with it. Did you guys review them? I reviewed them. Let me see who was here. I was here. Frank. Yeah. Tim. I reviewed them. We were all here. Right. And I'm going to tell you, she really does a great job. Of, it's, it's, they're copious notes. Okay. 
I mean, it's done very well. But of course, our two attorneys usually find a Some punctuation, <laughs> a hyphen, you know. Most, most of the time, it's him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's good. He's, he's right on. I, I wish I could write like this. Okay. I wish I could speak like this. You do too. Okay, so, um, you know, I can kind of rely on you guys a little bit, too, but I'm just, you know, right. nothing's jumping out at me. Well, I'm going to... See anything, Tom? No. No, I've gone through them. They look pretty good. Yeah. Dates, people, times, comments. Nothing with that one. <clears throat> okay. Not so in right. light of that, uh, do we have a motion with regard to approval of the minutes for March 5th? Yes, I'd like to, Tom Lee, I'd like to put forward a motion to approve the minutes as written. And do we have a second of that motion? Second. Paul Rochelle seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that's unanimous. That they are approved. Uh, Vote oh, on vote on zoning amendment committee members. What makes anybody think that anybody can vote on that? Okay. What the frick? Ooh, what? Pretty strong language. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised, Mister. What are we? Gonna, you mean you? You're asking who would like to hold like the hand? The Zach. <laughs> Your bylaws say so you can vote on. That's it's in the bylaws. The vote on who is who will be obviously. The DPA bylaws say we can vote on it. Say that you can vote on who will be the. the wow, team. which I believe did last year. Yes. Voted on uh, asking members to represent. Oh, I did. after after the two members, of course, agreed to do it. To find out which two members, and then and, and, uh, I think you got elected. You work here, so. Uh, <laughs> two here, three from the planning board, and one. Yeah, yeah. right. Sounds like Tim's on Zach, uh, which I, I did for in board. So you have already put him into the Zach. board. I'll do Zach and, I, and be as the representative for the board. Uh, board select. Okay, and Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm more than more happy to, to be on the Zach committee. Okay. So we can only have two members from ZBA, right? Right. ZBA. right. And even if he's there as the Board of Selectmen? I think it's added to. I think there still can be two members of the of the zoning board plus the Board of Selectmen. It's the a, way I read it. One ex official Board of Selectmen. You you read that. And so See, but you, you, have that? you wouldn't be able to vote. If you go to Zach okay. at the Board of Selectmen, you okay. then you're the ex officio. Correct. Right. And then so the way, way we right, so then just the way the way it's broken up is that we have so the, the select the selectmen or the Tom, Tom, do you want to be in? Because I'm more than happy to let go for it. No, please. So use your wisdom. Not say. my wisdom. Okay. That's that's really subjective. Okay. I know. Well we can what you can do is you can decide. And normally the this board of select the select board member on the Zach committee votes only to break a tie. They're not a regular voting member. Do we know who's already on the planning board? I do know. You know, you're not helping I'm not a big help. I know. Okay. It's not helping here. I'm sorry. I've had too long a break. I, no offense, but I hear the planning board is not easy to work with. <laughs> um, so, Paul, well, if you're going to be on Zach, you could be on either as an ex officio member mm -hmm. 
of the selectmen. Mm -hmm. um, and if you were that, I think they would still be, uh, we'd still be able to have two members of the ZBA on there. And you would have no voting rights no voting rights on that. But you would participate and contribute and give uh -huh. input and so forth. But he would the way it is written, if there was a tie. If there was a tie, right. you, can vote, right. you can vote to break the tie, right? I'll double check because I don't want us to end up in trouble with a right. quorum. Right. Right, 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 right. Yes. So I will I will double check that. Last year last year it was Joe Whitman. Right. Right, and I did not ask him if he was a voting member or not. He, he was. That was all decided when Bill was on the board. Was that he, if we needed a, a tiebreaker, it was the select okay. representative from the select board that did the tiebreaker. That would break the tie. But other than that, he didn't vote on on uh, stuff as a member of the committee. Generally co correct. Right. So, so how can I just ask a stupid question? If you have three members from the planning board. Right. And two members from the Board of Adjustment mm -hmm. or the Variance Board, how could there possibly be a tie? You forget there's a meeting and don't show up. Then we have four and two and two. Someone has to vote. Oh, on that. oh I see. By the way, there are three members of the Planning Board. Yeah. yeah it's just a seven. It's a seven. Seven. It's a seven member, member board. board. So that's not a quorum. Right. Wow. It's a seven member board. Seven seven it's a six member board. It's a six member. Seven member. How does that get to be seven? Exact members shall be chosen no, by. Right. We're, no, no. We're, we're talking about the planning, planning board. The planning oh, board is planning board. It's seven. Sorry. 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 Right. Which is why three of the planning board members can be on that without right. without right. constituting a quorum of the planning board. They're seven. Right. right. So that's fine. But only two of us should be. All right. So you want to wait to determine who's going on Zach until you check with. Yeah, I don't want to create. I mean, right. I don't we don't want to create it. Right. Right. Because right now, if 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 Paul can go and be ex officio as the selectman, then it would be Paul and two others of us, whoever those may be. Frank will be one. Um, if not, then it'll be Paul and Frank probably. Okay. So but we'll look into. But let's look into yeah, that first. Yeah, okay. Does that. that make sense? All right. Thank you. All right. And then um, we need to uh, uh, select the chairman and a vice chairman. And uh, what else do we have? A chairman, a vice chairman, and clerk. And clerk. clerk. So, yeah. Go ahead and do that. Is my, this my uh, first question? Would be either one of you, would you want to be uh, chairman again, or? I think so. Take over. Yeah. Then I'd nominate Frank Rich as, mm -hmm. as chairman. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's good. That's good. So, uh, 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 Paul has nominated Frank. Tom has second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. <laughs> But so uh, Frank is, will be the uh, chairman. Uh, I, I think that's a bad move. And and um, <laughs> get a place of paper Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> now we need a vice chairman. Now I'm going to nominate Tom for vice chair. And that's, that's, oh, no, that's no, I've been no. there. Uh, I'm going to second that motion. Yeah. All right. And then uh, you got to call the vote now because you're the chairman. <laughs> No, not, not until this is all done, right? I don't know. I don't know how it works. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. So, and then uh, I'm going to nominate Paul to be the clerk. Okay. You know, you're really pushing me. <laughs> pushing yourself right out. Second. I'm going to second the motion. All, right. all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good. So, Frank. Hey, is anybody John. talk to Tim at all? Because today, sorry. Well, I didn't, uh, Jessica, uh, Amelia talked to him today. Okay, is everything okay? Okay. Right. Um, this was an extra stuff in the packet I already had. I printed from the email, so I don't need it. I'm going to leave it here with you. That's fine. Um, and then uh, Frank has to uh, 
uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. Oh, can, can I get a motion to adjourn, please? I'm going to make that motion. I move we Do adjourn. I have a second? I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Holy you. Thank you very much. Thank you, I should have never come to this. <laughs>